Hi, this is Adam Block, and I'm back again to tell you more about WBPP. It is an ever-evolving script that has, in this case, new features. And so I have to make new videos to explain what they do. I want to make this the definitive guide, but I don't mind doing it because these enhancements, these new features that I want to highlight, they're really great. It is actually an evolution that is uh, with purpose. I mean, there's certainly some improvements here, and I think you'll enjoy seeing them. So I'm going to very briefly highlight the major ones here. There is one element that I'm going to make a separate video on. I'll show you what it is here, but then please go watch that next video to see some of the details about um, all of its uh, possibilities. So to begin with, You'll notice here at the bottom there's a, no, a new button called Directory. Now you already know how files works. You click on this and you can highlight any number of files, and they can be different types of images, and they'll be loaded properly into their, um, their proper groups. And those groups would, you know, they would live here in each of the panels, or you would see them load as groups in the control panel. But now with the Directory button, Instead of highlighting a set of files, you can now just select a directory and all files in the directory and other directories under it, recursively, will be scanned and all of those files will be loaded. So it's yet an even faster way to load files if you do have that kind of organization. Now, if you have nested directories where there are files that are not associated with the ones that you want to load, then this button is too... Um, uh, it, it does too much. It's going to go into the place that you don't want, so you won't be as specific as necessary. Just use the Files button. But let me just show you a nice example. Here is some data that was given to me by a very kind gentleman, Joseph Drudis. This is data that I highlight in my workflow sections in fundamentals at adamblockstudios.com. This is a really great data set to illustrate the workflow of processing. And you'll see that he provided me all kinds of stuff. You've got calibration data, blue, red, green, luminance, hydrogen alpha, everything. All these files are in each of these directories. Now you won't see them listed right now because as the directory function, all I need to do is highlight the directory that I want to recursively um, scan and it will go in and now open all of the files that are in each of those directories. So let's just do that takes it a moment because there are a lot of files. And here's the result. You'll, it'll tell you what it loaded, so you can actually see everything that it loaded, which is actually good, um, though there are a couple of things that I make this a really good example. Number one, down here at the bottom, you'll see that uh, there, it found 284 frames, but only 281 were added. So you might wonder, well, what, what is that about? And over here, I'm going to just exit really quickly. You can see there are some errors. And I want to point this out because this is not uncommon. That data that I grabbed from him was downloaded. And it very well could be that a few of the files are corrupted or there might be a problem with them. This is a big sign, a big uh, hint that there is a problem. What WBPP and just PixInsight in general tries to do is it needs to read the FITS header and if the first line in the FITS header isn't anything that, you know, deals with a, a CCD image because maybe it's a corrupted file and it just has garbage letters here, then um, it says, I can't read that, and it just continues on. So that's all this is saying is that these are corrupted files. It's saying the extension doesn't start with what it should, which totally makes sense if those files are just, they're garbage. So I wanted to point that out. There appears to have been some garbage files. I don't, well, we can actually see which ones, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to say, okay, that was a problem. And now that you've seen that, if you ever see that again, you'll know probably those files, there's something wrong with them. It will also tell you, I don't, I don't have an example like this, but it'll also tell you when you initially load those data, you know, if you're loading something like a JPEG file or some other, you know, known file type, but might not be useful to you. So you, you want to check that out and be sure you're just loading the data that you're going to be calibrating or combining or so on. Now, this data set has been loaded using the directory button. And now I can point out some of the other cool features, which is kind of cool. So let's just look here. 
we can see that the biases are loaded in the bias panel. We have the darks loaded here, the flats. So all the files are populated in their proper places here. And that was a lot, I mean, there are a lot of files. So it's, it's really cool that it can, it can do all of that for us. The control panel obviously shows the same information. All of the same groups are here. Here in the control panel, you can see something which might strike you. It is that you know that there are some more columns over here. Sometimes you'll need to stretch the, um, the window for the script over to see all of the columns, but the status column has been moved over to make it a little more obvious so it's not hidden um, if you hadn't have uh, made that window large enough. So that's a, that was a good idea. What I'm going to be showing in this next video or another video in this series is that there are now different ways to set up how to um, deal with the, the data when you have keywords. So as you know, you can group information by particular keywords. And the cool thing is, and this is something that has been desired for a while, is that when you calibrate all this information, you want to potentially group by night or in some logic, you group all the data together for calibration purposes, but then let's say it is multiple nights across multiple nights, you might want to just combine all of the luminance data, not caring at which night it took place on that calibrated data. You're going to want to combine all together in the previous version of WBPP. That was not possible. There was no way to group the output data, the post-processing part, but now you can. So there's different ways um, of handling it with your uh, grouping keywords, and I'll be demonstrating how that works, but that does require another section. There is also now a way to group by um, registration. So if you are registering images, there's now a mode where you can do an auto mode and a manual mode for registration. And the auto mode, again, is going to take care of a, a grouping capability. I'll be showing that that'll become available here. You can't see it right now, but I'll be demonstrating that as well. Sometimes there are certain situations where maybe you have a mosaic and you want to uh, register the images with respect to uh, you know, the frames or the panels that are used in the mosaic. That's really the specific example that grouping for registration is necessary. Otherwise, you pick a reference frame that will, you know, register all the images across um, the whole set uh, as necessary. But you can group differently for registration purposes if you want. And again, I'll be highlighting that in, in just a moment in another section. Another interesting thing about the grouping capabilities are that if you have a, uh, a keyword like hydrogen alpha or something there, you can now use dashes. So there was the request that dashes should be an allowed character in the keywords. It is now allowed. So um, in one of my previous videos, I said it was not allowed. That's now changed. It is now allowed. Although my previous video won't hurt if you avoid them but uh, now you don't have to worry about that. So that's nice. I'm not going to demonstrate this here because I would have to process all the data, but the smart report itself has been improved. So please check out the output once you have seen, you know, all the calibration and uh, other uh, actions that uh, unfold with WBPP. Look at that smart report and uh, see some of the differences. Hopefully it'll be even more helpful than it has been in the past. In terms of being more helpful, I want to show something else. If you haven't done this exercise before, it is always a good idea to be able to look at this control panel and be able to understand what is going on and what you might want to have happen. So I would encourage you, I'm just going to take this opportunity to do this. It's not a feature, it's a quiz. Um, look at this control panel and just you know, pause the video and, and say, what is going on and what do you have to do to make what is currently loaded work? I'll assume that you have paused and now I'll just say the answer. There are a couple of little issues and of course they are highlighted here by the warning and you can click and find out you know, fundamentally what's going on. It says the flat frames exposure differs from the master darks. And uh, so you can do something, which is you can disable the master dark and subtract the master bias only. That is exactly what uh, we want to have happen here because you'll notice there is no dark 
no what people would call a flat dark. There is no dark frame here to calibrate any of these flat frame images. And so I asked that this now be the language to remind you that the first way to take care of that, it's not the only way, but it is one suggested way, is to subtract a bias. So I'll do that. You just uncheck this dark, and then it will be using the bias to do the calibration. Notice here that if I show the calibration diagram, it's going to try to subtract a 1200 second dark frame, which is not going to do what we want. So we want instead this, and we show the calibration diagram, and now it's doing the proper calibration of this flat frame image, or this group of flat frames, but um, by subtracting the master bias. That's exactly what we want to calibrate that flat data. You'll notice there's another warning here, and this one I'm proud of. This is the one that I was really looking forward to Roberto uh, adjusting, and he did. So this light frame here, it doesn't have a matching dark. And so it does have a flat. You can see it's matching with this flat, but it doesn't have an exact matching dark. This is a 300 second exposure. The dark here is 1200 seconds. So what are you going to do? Well, the reality is I probably, this was probably just a mistake, this image, because you'll notice that all the other frames here for the luminance are, are 1200 seconds. So this 300 second single thing was whatever, I don't know. But let's say we wanted to use it. What would we need to do? Well, in this case, we do have a bias. So the best scenario is to do um, the optimization of the dark in order to take advantage of it. But right now, look at this. Here's the cool part. Right now, if we look at the calibration diagram, it's going to use this 1200 second dark and you can see it's going to subtract it here and then apply the flat and do the job. Previously, the diagram would show you something about the bias being used because there is a bias here. But now the diagram says, no, no, the bias is not in play. You don't see anything about a bias here. And that um, correctly reflects what's being shown here. We have a matching flat. And then we have the best it could find was the only dark frame here. And we have the warning telling us that's probably not the dark we want to use. So the proper thing to do is to optimize. We can, because now we have, we do have here a bias we can take advantage of. It wasn't being used a moment ago, but now it is. We'll see that when we show the calibration diagram. Here you can now see that the master bias is being used to scale this dark by uh, what it'll discover is some k value, some scaling factor, and that's what is multiplied by the thermal frame. Please review my previous section about this in order to subtract the proper amount from the uh, light frame, and then of course the flat is applied, and then we have a calibrated light. But now I think that it is much more clear what is going on uh, with regards to biases. If the bias is not truly being used, it will not show up in the calibration diagram. It will also not light up in its group when it is not being used. And that, I think, is very clear. So that was a really brief overview of some of the features. They were small enough that uh, no real big explanation is required, though this part of the, uh, the grouping, the custom grouping that we can do between the pre-processing and the post-processing um, modes of WBPP, that I'm going to uh, illustrate in another video. So I hope you enjoyed this quick update and enjoy the, the new enhanced stuff of WBPP.